welcome back to a new tutorial. This week I'm going to show you how to create these disrupted strings in Cinema 4D using their rope dynamics. Let's jump in and get started. Okay, first things first, let's hit Shift C and bring up this commander. And you can see I already got it up, but we need to get this segment. So if you search segment in this search bar, um, we can double click this and bring it in. And then straight away we want to up this point count. Let's go up to like 150. So it's going to give us lots of points which is good for when we're going to simulate that rope. And now if we hold Alt and add a cloner, we're going to put that segment inside the cloner and we're going to keep it on grid, but we want to turn down this count to one and we want to up this count a bit more, but we also need to bring the size or the distance between them uh, to a lot smaller. So maybe let's see what three looks like. Yeah, this could do. And then let's add uh, a few more. Uh, back in the segment, actually, we can also up the length. Um, something like this could do. We'll be able to figure it out once we get our camera uh, figured out. So what I might do is go into our camera and I'm going to up the focal length to something quite high, maybe 120. I want it to feel like we're looking into something that's quite small because these are meant to be strings. So we'll go with 120 and let's kind of figure out our camera position. Maybe zoom out a little bit, something like this. I think this could be a nice shot. And I might even bring in some more segments. So let's up this count a bit more and then also decrease the gap and then add more so we fill in the frame. So with our cloner selected, if we right click and go down to simulation tags and we've got this rope tag. So we add that on and straight away let's turn this bendiness up to 100 and maybe let's up the radius to one for now um, and that should be it for now so right now i've got my gravity off so if i hit play nothing's going to happen it's just everything sinks still so let's add if we go up to simulate forces and add a turbulence and maybe we could up this turbulence uh, maybe up the scale just a little bit and hit play. Now, yeah, that's going crazy. So not what we want, but we do want the turbulence to take place in a certain path that we create. So what I'm gonna do is with turbulence selected, we're going to the fields and we're gonna add a spherical field. Now we're gonna make this a lot smaller. So let's turn this size down to something like this. And maybe we'll come out of our camera for a second so we can animate this. So let's go in closer to the scene. Let's hit play now. And you can see that turbulence is only taking place in the field, but obviously it's pulling these strings in where they're simulating, but we want this field to pass through the strings, almost disrupting them. So let's go back to the start and let's bring out our field out of the scene. And we're gonna go to its coordinates, make sure we're on the spherical field, not the turbulence. And let's go into the coordinates. Let's hit a keyframe here. Let's move forward to, let's go to frame 70. Let's move this field to the other side. Now if we go back and we hit play, you can see we've got our disrupted lines. We can go back into our camera, see how it's looking. It's looking quite nice. Right now there's still segments, so we're not actually seeing any geometry if we were to render this. So to get some geometry, we need to add in a sweep. So add this sweep in, let's bring it just above the cloner Make sure it's not a child of the turbulence and then drop the cloner into that and then we also need to add in a circle so we drop that circle in and we move that just above the cloner inside of this sweep and then we turn this down so go into the objects turn this radius down to one maybe now this circle was supposed to be our profile shape for each of these segments but if we come out of our camera you can see it's done it for the first one but not the rest so what we need to do is with that cloner selected, let's go into here and let's hold Alt and hit Connect. So now you can see we've got our cloner inside the connect. I'm going to turn World off. You can see now we've got our profile shape working for each segment. So I'll minimize that and let's go back into our camera and we can hit play. And we've got our rope simulating. Now it's chugging quite a little bit so hit NB and you can see we've got loads of geometry so what we could do is with our circle we've got this spline and then we've got points we can lower this down 
and you can see it's kind of taking out some geometry. So we could put this down to like three. You could always up it for when you want to render, but for now, I think this is good. So already we've got this nice effect taking place, these disrupted strings. Now we could play around with the turbulence. We could select it. We could up the strength loads, maybe like 120. And then we could play around with the scale. Let's see what this looks like right now. And yeah, this is, this is looking really cool. Now we could up the scale, but this will create some bigger movements. Uh, so it just depends what you need. Yeah, so you see it's creating really different movements, like big differences in between like, it's like larger shapes. So you see this goes down, but this is all going up. So some big differences. So I like to keep this a bit lower because it's supposed to be like a small scale. So I might just keep it around here. Yeah, this is looking really nice. And I also, at the end, I would probably subdivide this sweep. So if we hold this, um, if we select this sweep and hold Alt and select the subdivision. Now for playback, uh, we probably won't want this on because it's gonna make our computers chug a lot. So I'm gonna turn this down for the viewport, but in the render, we could keep it at two or even just go to one. Now it looks a little bit random just having the field drive the animation. So we could add like a shape to look like it's driving it as if like it's creating that disruption. Um, so what we could do, come out of our camera. If we were to add in maybe a rectangle, and uh, let's turn this way down. Well, let's go 200, 200 for now, and then we can scale it down in a minute. If we rotate this 45 degrees, if we hold shift and rotate, we can rotate in segments. So I'm gonna go to 45 degrees. So we've got this point on top. And I'm gonna hit C to make this shape editable. If we go into our points mode, let's make sure we're in global transform. And I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna try and make an arrow. It won't, be a, it won't be a super great model, but I think this could look like a nice, um, nice shape to drive the animation. And if we come back out of points mode, Okay, we can go up here and add an extrude holding Alt. And yeah, there we go. So we can bring this offset down. And we've got some uh, issues with the ge geometry here. So if we go to caps, we can go to tessellation. We can change this to triangles. And that will get rid of that weird geometry we have there. So I'm going to now make this shape a lot smaller because we don't need it to be huge. But yeah, you could do whatever shape you wanted. It's just like a visual representation for the lines being disrupted. Um, okay, I'm gonna make this shape editable now. I'm not gonna make any more changes to it. So I'm gonna hit C on it, and that's made it actual geometry. And if we make sure we're in object mode, go up to tools, axis, axis center, and let's hit execute just to put that more so into the center. And let's make sure we're in uh, world transform rotate that 90 degrees and I'm going to scale it down even more and what I might do now is kind of line it up with the maybe just a slight bit ahead of the sphere and what we could do from here is just uh, right click on the object we've just created and let's go to rigging constraints and let's just tick parent and with parent selected we can hit the eyedropper and select our spherical field. So now when that spherical field is moving, our like cursor pointer or whatever shape you're using will follow that spherical field. So I'm gonna go back into our camera and hit play. So now we've got something visually looking like it's creating that disruption. That's really the effect set up. I could go in and add some materials quickly. So let's just get into a nice point here. So we could add a material. Let's make like a blue. Let's maybe up the roughness. Um, maybe I'll add bump. Just add some noise, I reckon. Some max on noise. Let's plug that in. And I'm gonna lower this input down to 0.5. And I don't reckon the bump's gonna to need to be that strong. So I'm gonna half that. And let's just, let's get a render view. 
Oh, I've already got one on my other screen. I'm gonna undock that. I'm gonna move that over here. There we go. Here we are. So this is from the example. I'm gonna hit progressive rendering. Uh, let's apply that material onto our, I might put that on my sweep instead actually, uh, because I'm gonna do something in a minute with the material. Let's also add in a dome light. Let's move that into the lights category and I might turn the exposure down a little bit. And then I'm gonna also add an actual area light. And also I've got this light tracker that I just have in my default project. So I'm gonna right click animation and hit target and hit the eyedropper tool, select my target. So now when I move my light, you can see it's always gonna be pointing towards that target. It's very overexposed. So I'm gonna turn that down quite a bit. Um, but yeah, let's come out of the camera, just move that away. I'm gonna turn the dome light off for the viewport as well because it's so bright and I can't really see what's going on. So move this over. I'm gonna also make it a bit smaller. Don't need, to be, don't need it to be so big. Uh, let's also lock this render view to the camera just so I can see exactly how it's going to look. I'm gonna turn the spread down. Maybe this is, looks quite nice. Let's, uh, maybe a bit more. Yeah, about here. And then I might move it around just a little bit so it's kind of kind of going diagonally across. Yeah, this looks quite cool. Just messing with the properties until you get something that you like. Now I want to create like a, a bit of a difference in the lines. Now I want to visually show where the lines have been disrupted in the material, uh, like I did in my example. So what I want to do is with the sweep selected, if we right click, go to other tags and add in a vertex map. Now we can turn off use deformed points and we can drop in our spherical field from earlier. So I'm gonna drop that in if I hit play. Now at the moment, this isn't gonna do what I need it to do, but what we can do, go back into the material. Let's double click and add a vertex attribute. Now in this attribute name, we wanna drag and drop this vertex map. Now this is going to take that vertex map in information like we can see here, and it's going to affect the material depending on how we set it up. So what I'm gonna do is add in a mix color or a color mix, and just plug this out color into the mix amount. So we could just change these two colors. So we could do the blue that I originally had, and maybe I'll do an orange, like quite a strong orange. Something like this, let's see how this looks. And if we plug this up to the base color, turn that off, and you can see our vertex map is now, yeah, affecting. So we could keep it like this if we wanted, I'll hit play. Yeah, and you can see it's just doing it where the cursor is. So if you wanted that look, then of course you could just stop there, but I want it to stay on the pieces that have been disrupted. So on, on our vertex map, we could either hit decay, add a decay in and turn the effect strength all the way up. Now what that's going to do is wherever our vertex map passes, it's gonna stay there. So you can see this also looks quite cool, but it's also quite thin. So you could either up your spherical field size so it's affecting a larger area, or you could potentially use a freeze instead, like I've done in some of my previous tutorials. So I'm gonna turn this decay off. I'm gonna do the freeze method. It is a little bit more heavier on the PC, but not too much heavier. Um, so let's add a freeze and let's change the order. We need to put the freeze on the bottom and we need to change this spherical fill blending mode to max. And uh, let's go back into the freeze, change this to grow, and then let's change these parameters. I'm gonna do six on the radius, and maybe 15 on the strength. Now, when we hit play, I clear this freeze, make sure there's nothing on there already. Hit play. You can see it's already being a lot slower. Maybe I'll stop progressive rendering. Now it's a little bit quicker. So we'll let it play through. Maybe I'll hit the vertex map so we can see it. But you see it's growing. 
Maybe I'll turn the effect strength down a little bit as I don't want it to be growing too quickly, but let's see what it's looking like. Back into the camera, but yeah, this is looking really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna drop this effect strength down to maybe 7.5, let's just half it. And I'm gonna do the same thing again, let's just play through. Let me get into my camera view as well. Let's see how quickly it's growing. I think this is quite nice. Yeah, this is a good pace. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, no, I'm liking this, I'm liking it quite a bit. Now that you've got this vertex map set up, you can do whatever you want with it really in the material. You can just use it to drive like differences. So right now you can see that bump map I set up earlier, we can control that as well. So maybe I don't want that on the orange part. So maybe I want it to be completely different. So we can still do, so we can still use that vertex attribute to control that. So we'll add in another color mix. We can plug that in. We can plug in our max on noise into input one and then plug that into our bump. Then we hit rendering again and you can see now our bump is just here. It's just on the blue parts and then we haven't got any of it on the orange parts. So it's looking really nice. So you can really do whatever you want with it. Now that you've got it set up, you can just set up your material to do whatever you want. You could, it could be glowing, um, it could be transparent. You could do whatever you want now that you've got this set up. It gives you a lot of control. I'm quite liking the thickness, but I, I might change the thickness of these uh, strings a little bit. Let's go 0.75. What does this look like? Maybe, no, maybe I'll keep it at one. I quite like how they're practically like right next to each other. It looks quite nice. I like the shot. Um, but then also, yeah, I'm going to bring that subdivide back in. So let's play this through so we can actually get quite a bit of disruption going on. So I've just played this through quite a bit so I can get a look at the strings. And you can see some of them might be a little bit too jagged. Let's just see what they look like in the rendered mode. I mean, they're not they're not awful, but I would like to see how they look with the subdivide on. So I'm gonna turn that up. Yeah, it's really subtle, but it's gonna look a lot nicer. So yeah, here's the final frame. I think it's a really cool and interesting look, and it really wasn't that difficult to set up. But you can just expand on this and make it your own. But you can make it look way more complicated than this. I've just kind of tried to keep it quite basic and easy to understand. So feel free to just go away and make it your own. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe to see more content like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in next week's video.